Good morning, everybody. Welcome once again with Breakfast with Deacons. I am Deacon Derek Walcott, and guess what? It is truly Breakfast with Deacons. Today with me is Deacon Mike James, um, and so your host, we are hosting Breakfast with Deacons for the very first time for, the, for at least a couple sessions. Okay. Welcome, 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 and Deacon. Thank you. How Thanks. are you? Lovely to be here. All right, and I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing one of my alarms going off here, mm -hmm. telling me it's 7 o'clock mm -hmm. and it's time to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful to be here this morning, and Deacon Mike James and I are going to be working through breakfast with deacons this morning so thank you for joining us what are we going to be talking about this morning we're going to be talking about my brother here and his role and hold on you know i need to get that that somebody is calling me you know i i think we've got somebody calling me as well let, let me just step apart but deacon my james mm -hmm. you are part of the Antilles Episcopal Conference, mm -hmm. you are the secretary. Yes. Did I have that right? The general secretary. The general secretary. Mm -hmm. You want to share with the rest mm -hmm. of, of the group, what is your role mm -hmm. as, as the secretary of the AEC? OK, good. Okay, good. Certainly will. Yes, while you go answer your phone. I'll answer my yes. phone. <laughs> yes, good, good morning, uh, viewers. Uh, very, very happy to be here. And I guess one of the things, the good news that is uh, such an important part of this program you may want to hear, of course, is that you may have heard that um, we are having a very um, uh, uh, important uh, Cardinal uh, uh, Feloni, who is coming from, from Rome, and he'll be here at the, at the end of this month. And he will be hosted by the Archdiocese of, uh, of Port of Spain, but also, okay, all the bishops from the Caribbean will be here from the AEC, the Antilles Episcopal Conference, to, to meet with him, and there will be a a uh, big mass on, on, on Saturday, Saturday the 30th of November at, um, at uh, San Fernando. Right. Um, you know, so that, that'll be, so, you know, and, and this person is, you know, one who is uh, our direct link from the Caribbean to mm -hmm. Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think we'll be talking a little bit about Pope Francis and, and good wow. news. Good Pope news. Francis good. is good news Pope for Francis the church. Pope Francis is mm -hmm. excellent mm -hmm. news for the church. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw that, you know, his, his whole, th th there's a video on YouTube mm -hmm. with him and this six-year-old adopted yes. boy yeah. because he's, an, he's a Colombian by birth yes. and he ah. was adopted by an Italian couple. That's why, his, you, know his, you know what his name is? What is his name? His name is Carlos. His name is Carlos. Oh. Remember that name, Carlos. <laughs> Boy, I think we're going to see big things about Carlos. He's already making incredible news. They've been breaking records. But the gentleness mm -hmm. of Pope Francis, mm -hmm. how he reaches out to so many people. Yes. Um, you, you, we were talking a, a little earlier about how images of Pope Francis, mm -hmm. the things that he is doing, the way that he is reaching out to mm -hmm. people, you know, it's, 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 it's crossing all boundaries. Mm -hmm. I've heard atheists say, listen, this man mm -hmm. is something special, mm -hmm. you know, and truly, you know, ordained by Almighty God, mm -hmm. chosen, I believe, completely by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. for our times. Mm -hmm. And you were sharing with me about Pope Francis and the elephant man, this disfigured mm. man. You, you, you brought it to my attention. You tell this story. Yes, this was just last, uh, last Wednesday. Um, you know, then is when um, uh, Pope Francis normally has his general audience there in um, St. Peter's uh, Square. And there's always, you know, many thousands of people there for the Pope's blessing and to, to hear his words. And up there at the front of the group, Pope Francis saw a person and he just interrupted his address and he just went down to, to say hello to this person and it turned out uh, you know this person is a, a badly disfigured uh, man his face is terribly disfigured mm -hmm. I think many readers may have heard about or seen the film the elephant man it's a it's, it's a, a congenital disease that disfigures your mm -hmm. your face and Pope Francis was so 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 moved he he just went down to him and embraced him hugged him, kissed him, and, and, gave, and gave consolation and, and joy to this person. And this uh, story that is picked up by um, the Daily Mail, which is a, a British um, tabloid newspaper, which usually has the, you know, the kind of news that we wouldn't, we wouldn't often share on, um, mm -hmm. on Trinity, they carry that story. And you have across the globe thousands of people responding, and many of them 
Um, you know, in, in, in England and the, in Europe, many people, you know, perhaps who do not have the faith any longer, but people writing in saying, I'm an agnostic, I, I don't believe, but, but this, this, this manifestation of love and of simple sincerity and solidarity with those who are marginalized, that is what the world needs. If there's anything in, in faith, that is the wonderful thing I see in it. That is wonderful. That's good news. Yeah. It's good news because, again, it was, you know, the, 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 this little boy, you yeah. know, we're talking about, about, about what the Holy Father yeah. is asking of all of us. Yeah to be like Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because Jesus touched the lepers, the mm -hmm. disfigured, mm -hmm. who, you know, as we read in the Bible, people would scorn. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't want to touch them because they would feel that they would be contaminated. Mm -hmm. Jesus is showing us, or Jesus showed us by his very life, mm -hmm. that, you know, he calls us to touch, to reach out, to love, to console, to bring healing. Mm -hmm. And that healing could be the healing of the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, to understand that you are loved. Mm -hmm. You know, we may not all be healed physically, mm -hmm. but there is that, that, that deeper pain mm -hmm. and yeah. hurt, mm -hmm. you know, that, it, that when you love someone, mm -hmm. it brings about that healing inwardly. Exactly. You know, and, and it's so much good news. And so the Holy Father is challenging all of us. Mm -hmm. He's challenging you outside the NTV land. Mm -hmm. And he's challenging the deacons here mm -hmm. who, are, who, are, who are ordained to serve mm -hmm. for us to reach out to the very, his very broken body, exactly. like Blessed Mother Teresa mm -hmm. of Calcutta. Exactly. And she did the same thing. Mm -hmm. She reached out to those who were marginalized, mm -hmm. broken, mm -hmm. suffering, dying, dirty, mm -hmm. smelly, with love. Exactly. This is the call of Jesus Christ okay. to all of us. And that is good news. Yes. And the wonderful thing is, is when we can begin to do it naturally. You know, it is not put on, you yes, know, yes. because sometimes we can, we can help the poor, we can help the marginalized, and, and we make them feel inferior even as we do that. But the wonderful thing as we see with, with Pope Francis is that it is when we are really close to Christ, mm -hmm. we we are almost gradually automatically begin to take on the aspects of Christ. And that, and every, so many things that Francis is doing, you're saying it, it sounds extraordinary, but if we just go back to the, to the gospel, mm -hmm. we, we can immediately put a, a, a line on the line that yeah. says, you know, um, mm -hmm. don't, reach out to the children, do not turn them away. Mm -hmm. And there is this, this little boy, and I hope you know, maybe Trinity can put that clip up yeah, yeah, on yeah, sometime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, of yeah. this little boy, uh, Carlos, uh, an orphan, who decides to come up and, and the Pope is speaking and there's you know, all these important people speaking. This little boy goes up first, he, you know, he sits in the Pope's chair and you can see all the, the cardinals behind <laughs> getting so nervous. And, uh, you know, and then one of them, one of them brings a sweet and, and gives this little boy. Yeah. And the little boy takes the sweet but he, and then he tries to pull him and the little boy pulls away and runs to Francis as, and hugs him because children have a way of sensing yes. our authenticity yes maybe because they, they don't speak so much they feel people yes. and you can see in that where he runs to francis he feels here is my grandfather awesome. who will protect me yes and francis you know just puts his hand on his head and he continues speaking he doesn't push him away yes and i'm thinking so much you know last oh, week you you yeah. had a um, you had uh, Winston Garcia. Yes. I was thinking of JP, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Garcia's son, yes. you know, who comes to mass. And sometimes it can be a bit of a distraction. <laughs> but it's wonderful. I, yes. That little boy reminded me so much of, of Winston's son. Yeah. And then just Saturday, just last uh, Sunday at our mass at, at, yeah. at, at St. Francis Belmont, yeah. there's a lady who comes. She has uh, three children, two yeah. girls, and a, a little boy. Little girls are, are very organized, nine and ten. <laughs> little boy. He is exactly well worse than worse mm -hmm. than Carlos because yes. he is he's, he's making noise. Yes. And the poor woman is so embarrassed. And in the end, you know, uh, I just said, look, uh, look. Pope Francis says it is it's all right. No, it's all right. <laughs> and the people of Belmont and Saint Francis no have a problem. So yes. he, he he runs around a little bit, and then you know he, then he quiets and does he he wonders why his mom is not running after him. <laughs> 
and then he comes back to her. But I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the light of a saint. Yeah. Um, this this incredible priest was my mentor. Uh, one of my mentors at St. Mary's yeah. College, and his name was Father Nolly Knox, yes. and he was a parish priest at St. Anthony's. Mm -hmm. He started um, Bible school, mm -hmm. he started um, Sunday school in our parish, mm -hmm. and he was very much like that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember, you know, while he was parish priest at St. Anthony's, during the Our Father, mm -hmm. he would invite all the children exactly. to come up mm -hmm. and hold his mm -hmm. hands, yes. you know, in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible mm -hmm. because out, out of that, um, all the little children, mm -hmm. they just ran to Father Nolly exactly. mm -hmm. to hold his hand. And we had 50 mm -hmm. little boys and girls mm -hmm. holding his hand mm -hmm. from in the sanctuary mm -hmm. for the Our Father. Right. Right now, those young men and, wom and young women mm. in their twenties, in their early thirties, mm. are still are still serving on the altar as yeah, altar servers. Mm -hmm. On 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 Sunday afternoons, six o'clock mass, mm. there were ten altar servers, you know, helping at mass okay. there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about just young people. Mm. These were some of them were in their thirties. Mm. They remember Father Nolly Knox mm -hmm. when he was there. Yeah. And I was talking with one of them, you know, and he was saying, well, you know, this is a group from Father Nolly Knox. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're trying to roster altar servers mm -hmm. because at every Mass, we have 15 altar servers, mm -hmm. we have 10 altar servers, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 and it's growing, yes. you know, and it's that legacy that mm -hmm. was left by this incredible, incredible saint, mm -hmm. you know, who started Sunday school at St. Anthony's, mm -hmm. encouraged young people. Yes. He wanted them, he, well, he, he had this, the 915 mm -hmm. mass, which was four families, yes. and then he encouraged them. He wanted them to read at mass. Mm -hmm. He wanted them to pick up collections, mm -hmm. to bring up the mm -hmm. gifts, to join him on the mm -hmm. altar. And so they all gravitated towards him. And all, you always said, mm. after Mass, we've got cricks and cheese for you all. Exactly. <laughs> you know? and, and this is something that remained with all of mm -hmm. them, you know. And now we see those young people coming back yeah. to help at, at Sunday school. Mm. These people are all just silvers. Mm. They have wonderful families mm. touched by that man, just like these young people. And mm -hmm. people are being touched by St. Francis, right. mm. you know. That is good news. Yes, right, that right, right. is good, good news. Yeah. But let's talk about the AEC. Mm -hmm. Your role as secretary of the AEC, mm -hmm. um, you know, tell us what the AEC is all about because I'm quite sure that a number of our viewing public, when they say AEC, they're probably thinking of <laughs> ILP, PNM, <laughs> yeah. UNC. What is the AEC <laughs> yes. all about? Exactly, yes. Uh, um, right. Well, of course, uh, well, we were aware of our, you know, uh, that our, our presence, okay, here we are in, 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 in Trinidad and, and Tobago. But okay, I, I'm originally from Guyana. Well, we, we're part of we, part of what we call the Caribbean. Yes. And um, and okay, uh, perhaps in terms of the church in the Caribbean, we tend to when we talk about the Caribbean, we tend to think of well, okay, Jamaica, Trinidad, mm. Barbados. But of course, the Caribbean is much bigger. It yes. includes Haiti, mm -hmm. Cuba, Dominican Republic. So when the bishops, uh, um, you know, got together, and in fact, we have this association of the church in the Caribbean, um, which, which goes even before um, the Vatican II Council, when, wow. when, 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 um, when the uh, Episcopal conferences were introduced. Yeah. We, we had that from since 1948, the, um, you know, bishops from, from even from Belize yes. and Jamaica and Trinidad, yeah. etc., were getting together. And so when they were looking for a name, they had to choose, they couldn't say Caribbean because they would confuse you with the bigger Caribbean, so they said Antilles, mm -hmm. Antilles Episcopal Conference, AEC. Mm -hmm. So that's all the, the bishops and the church and the, the, all the, the laity of the, of the Caribbean that's English speaking, mm -hmm. so in, in other words, CARICOM, mm -hmm. plus um, Suriname, the mm -hmm. Dutch islands. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards in 1980, the, the French islands, right. like, um, uh, like um, uh, Martinique, Martinique and Guadeloupe, and yeah. Cayenne, yeah. wanted to join us as well. Wow. So we have an, an English speaking conference mm -hmm. that has also the French, mm -hmm. it also has the Dutch, gotcha. Curacao, um, Par, uh, Suriname, mm -hmm. etc., and the English speaking Caribbean. So there's, there's 20, 20, uh, 19 dioceses, plus mm -hmm. uh, also Cayman Islands and mm -hmm. Turks and Caicos, so some of these little places that don't play um, cricket, maybe yeah. they play a bit of football. And uh, so uh, 
no, just uh, one of the things that I'm involved in and the church is involved in is that at the end of this month, um, uh, uh, a cardinal from, from Rome, who yeah. is the, the prefect for the congregation for the evangelization of peoples, and you know the whole oh, issue of evangelization, right, right. but he is also our direct contact between the Caribbean and Pope Francis. Right. He is the, the, if you like, the, the point person, and maybe one of the smaller, one of the smaller jobs that he has to do is to is to recommend to yes. the Pope, uh -huh. you know, who should be the the next uh, next bishop for uh, really? for different. Um, yeah. So that's in that's, our region. In our region. Fantastic. So um, yeah. now it's going to be the first formal visit by a cardinal uh -huh. to our part of the world. Now, as you know, the cardinals are those who also help for the election of, mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of the new pope. Right. So he would have been involved in electing, yes. pope, electing Francis. pope Francis. Right. And he is playing a, he is going to be in, in Venezuela at the end of this month for an for a evangelization conference, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but will come to Trinidad mm -hmm. um, for the, the, he'll arrive on the 29th of, of this month, mm -hmm. and then on the, the 30th, you'll have a meeting with mm -hmm. all the all the bishops are coming in mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for a meeting with him yeah. you know to, to to discuss with him here what from him what francis is asking of the church and asking the people of the caribbean and the, and the bishops of the caribbean what kind of message do you want me to take back to pope francis oh. so that's what he's going to be meet, meeting and well, then after that i think they're, they're hoping to have a, a meeting with with deacons and yes, clergy yes, religious yes, on yes, the on the Friday yes. afternoon that's right. at yeah. uh, Turap, but that's I mean right. that's 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 unofficial news just yes. coming out. Yes, um, and then on Saturday on the Saturday afternoon there's going to be a, a big mass mm -hmm. down in our in our um, pro cathedral. That's right. Uh, with uh, down in San Fernando. So that's one of the things that you know that we are involved as as AEC mm -hmm. in helping to to support organize mm -hmm. that kind of meeting. So that's one of the things we're involved in. One of the other things that um, the AEC is involved in very much is again, um, as those of you who saw the program last week would have heard about um, Aparecida, yes. the conference, the document of the, of the church in Latin America and the Caribbean that talked about every Christian, every Catholic being a missionary disciple. That the church is saying that, you know, that our mission of sharing the good news mm -hmm. is not just for the priests mm -hmm. and for the sisters mm -hmm. and for the bishops yeah. and for the popes, but for every layperson. And this document, this, the, this is the first and only mm -hmm. English version. Yes, yes. And of course, um, okay, my wife Marie and I are, are, are translators as well. <laughs> yeah. So we have to translate this document wow. to English. So that, that's, 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 you know, fantastic, and, and to make Mike. it available to our, our church here. Good. So, so those are two of the little things that, um, you that know, we're involved I, in. But, but you know, I want you also to let everybody know on television mm -hmm. that our Pope was also one of the very instrumental people in writing this document. <laughs> exactly. When, um, when the president of, um, of, uh, of uh, Argentina went yeah. to visit the Pope, yeah. you know, she gave him one of these mate things, you know, yeah. these things that the, the South Americans are, mm. you know, uh, pull in. And then he gave, he gave her a copy of this book. And he says, if you want to know what the church in Latin America and the Caribbean thinks, read this, this book. Yes. And in fact, Pope Francis, yes, was the president of the commission Amen. that wrote this book. Amen. So all of a sudden, you know, even yeah. our friends in the United States are saying, look, can we, um, can we get copies of this book? Because we want to know <laughs> what is the thinking of, yes. of Pope Francis. Yeah. And very beautiful, that, that message. And the second thing, and you talked about this last week with, yeah. uh, with, uh, with uh, Winston, yeah. is this message that, uh, that we are all called to be witnesses to Christ, but be witnesses because we are in a real personal encounter with Jesus Christ, Amen. with Jesus Christ and his word in mm -hmm. the Bible. And that's one of the things that we are pushing very strongly. The bishops have said, we have to, we have the Eucharist, the mm -hmm. presence of the Lord. Yes. But then we also have the word of the, the Lord. The word of God. And it's a, those are the two things, yes. you know, perhaps we've, we've put um, uh, more emphasis on our catechism to make yes. it simple. Yes. but we as Catholics are now being called by the church to go back and encounter, how do we encounter Christ? By his, also by his word, also what he did, what, and what That's we right. see yes. Pope Francis doing yes. is what Jesus was doing. So if you want to know what Pope Francis is going to be doing next week, let's just open the, the, the Gospels. Uh -huh. Look at Zacchaeus. Yeah. Tomorrow, I, today I am going to have lunch with you. That's the attitude of Jesus. He doesn't say Zacchaeus, 
you know, you have to, you know, you have to give back this money first. You have to, you know, do. Oh, no, he says, I am awesome. coming to live with you. Yes. I am coming to be, I am coming to rest. I'm going to stay at your house. And then because of this love, yes. then Zacchaeus gets up and says, look, I give half of all I have to the poor. And if any, I've robbed anybody, here, I return it four times. You see, the love of God comes before, you know, this message of saying that you have to be good. No. God is good to us, yes. and therefore we have no choice but to be good to each other. And this is the one of the things that we are really, really plugging in the, in the Bishop's Conference. Let us get back to the Word of God and share that. Share that. Have Catholics in contact with the Word. Help them to, to yeah. know it, to live it, and to follow Jesus. But Deacon Mike, early on when we were talking about that, mm -hmm. you get to know the Word of God by reading the Bible. Yeah. And you were sharing with me about this drive to get Bibles out. Yeah. You, you want to tell those of you who want to get a good Catholic Bible, mm -hmm. something that would teach about the Word of God in, a, in, an, in an English that you can understand. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I know my, my daughter has one at home. Oh, good. So he has one. <laughs> yes, you know, good. and... Um, and then she has the UCAT to go with it. To go with that, yes. You know? so, but share with us th this yes. whole thing on the, on, on the drive to get the Bible okay. out and so on. So one of, one of the, the, the decisions taken by the, the AEC, um, and, and also in, in Latin America with Salam, is that the idea of one A Bible in, Catholic, in every Catholic home. Okay, first point, right? And so under that, we, we've gotten a, a very good, popular mm -hmm. um, Catholic uh, Bible mm -hmm. um, done by the, the Claritians um, mm -hmm. and very interesting enough you know people complain that well you know uh, the Protestants give away Bibles and why aren't Catholics giving away Bibles why is the Bible so expensive it's hundred and eighty dollars we've gotten a Bible and very interesting enough that Bible is cheap because you know where it was printed tell me tell me China. China. Oh. <laughs> Again, the communists, they don't believe, yeah. but the, it's good business. And they're producing a, yeah. a Bible that's very cheap. Yeah. And we, we ordered, the AC ordered 10,000 copies. Excellent. Um, um, and in fact, um, uh, about 1,000 uh, recently arrived here in, in Trinidad. In Trinidad. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, are going to be made available to, to parishes, maybe, you know, around perhaps well, I don't want to give out a figure because right. our parishes may give a, put a, put a little, yeah, 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 little yeah, markup yeah, yeah. for, yeah, uh, for yeah. services. But it's far cheaper than any other Bible. But the other thing is, look, Roman Catholics are noted, those who have Bibles, for having the Bible in such a wonderful state. You know, it looks absolutely brand new. And it's brand new because very often <laughs> we haven't opened it. We, haven't we, opened we, it. we have yeah. great respect for it, yeah. but we have so much respect for it that we don't read it. You know, we don't want it to, you know, to get dog-eared. Yeah. And I'm so happy when I see a, a cattle like, you know, like, yeah. like this one here. When, it, when you look at this Bible, it's all, it's got lines <laughs> all over it, etc. This is what we want. Yes. And in our parishes now, um, recently, there's a, there's a project in which mm -hmm. um, here in Trinidad and throughout the region, we, uh, there's going to be efforts to, to make the Bible available and also to help people to understand it because especially some parts of the Old Testament yes. are not easy to, to understand, right. to help people to understand and then to pray with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Lexio Divina, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you're familiar with yes, this, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Derek, yeah. but you know, for us to be able to, what Lexio Divina is a sort of, if you like, a, it's a, a prayerful reading of the Bible. You know, we read um, that passage, um, you know, Zacchaeus, come down, yes. I must have, I must remain at your house today. Mm -hmm. And as we read it, we reflect, what is this saying? Yes. What is this saying, saying to, to me? me? What yes. is the Lord saying to, to me? me? And what, what do I have to then say to the Lord? That's right. And to my brothers and sisters. Um, Very simple, yes. You know, and uh, uh, one of the experts in Lexio Divina is Father Michel Libertin. Exactly, yeah. You know, and I was really privileged to have some sessions with Father Michel, yeah. you know, um, Father Leo Donovan, one of uh, my parish priests. Mm -hmm. We have Lexio Divina mm -hmm. every week. Yeah. And so the parish meets um, in our pastoral mm -hmm. center. And a group of us would sit mm -hmm. with him and we would, you know, use that method mm -hmm. of reading the, the, the Sunday gospel, mm -hmm. preparing for it. So we do that on a Thursday mm -hmm. where we sit and we meet and we discuss the, the passage, mm -hmm. you know, and that helps Father and it helps all of us develop our mm. homilies and so on Good. for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we want every parish to do. Mm. Have a, 
Deacon Mike just shared with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we say we want, we love the Lord. But one of the ways in loving the Lord is also encountering Him in His Word. Exactly. The mm -hmm. Word of God says, and what does the Word of God say? You know, how is it by Pope Francis's whole life, it, we can see that he loves the Word mm. of God because he lives the Word of God. Exactly. And he's challenging all his faithful mm. to love the Word of God. Mm. He's challenging to live the Word of God. He says, you must smell like your sheep, mm -hmm. you know. And my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. looking at us on television, we've been sharing the good news. Mm -hmm. But part of the good news is picking up that Bible. Mm -hmm. Picking up that Bible and reading it. Picking up that Bible and asking the Holy Spirit to guide you. Get formed into communities. Mm -hmm. I know many Catholic homes have Bible study groups at mm -hmm. their homes. Mm -hmm. Why not have something like that amongst your neighbors? Get together with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Instead of just turning on the television and watching mm -hmm. something. No, we want you to turn on and watch mm -hmm. Trinity TV. Yeah? Yeah. But, you know, in, at those times, make that time to pray. Yeah. Get I your just, friends over. I just over. wonder if I could just give a practical Please. example. In, in St. Francis Belmont, yeah. starting this Friday, there's a little group that with um, about five families have volunteered each week yeah. to have a Bible, a nice Bible, mm -hmm. enthroned in their houses. So there's going to be a little procession from the wow. church to the first house. Yes. And we'll have our Lexio Divina there. Yes. And then the Bible will remain at that, that house for the week. For a week. They'll, you know, they'll do a right. little reading every day. Right. And then the following Friday, yes. we'll walk to the next house. Yes. Little procession. Fantastic. And then also then what Pope Francis is saying, you know, reaching out to yes. the wider community. Yes. And if I could just before we end, just just say another good word of thanks. Um, I know I think some of you may know that our, our the parish where we helped Maria and I, yeah. um, St. Francis Belmont, we're on the tents right now because yes. uh, you know the, the the church has to be redone. But uh, a sister parish, um, one called um, uh, St. Anthony, um, <laughs> just last week uh, sent us a. Uh, a, a, a small check. I mean, uh, I think I think Derek can say how much that check no, 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 was. No, I'm not going to tell uh, anybody. <laughs> to us, I mean, it is a wonderful manifestation yeah, yeah. of of solidarity and yeah. and love. Yeah. You know, towards enabling our our church and our congregation to move from under tent to, to going back into our church. And that's the wonderful solidarity that we can have that comes out of our response to the Word of God. Well, I think you know, um, Saint Anthony's Parish has really been blessed. Mm -hmm. tremendously blessed and it's all God's gift mm -hmm. and we're asked when we receive God's blessing mm -hmm. to share that blessing mm -hmm. you know so while I didn't want to share it over television um, it, it's just a response yeah. thanking God for his mm -hmm. love and sharing because that's what God calls us to mm -hmm. he calls us to share he calls us to love yes. you know and you are our brother parish mm -hmm. you know and that's God's whole call for all of us. Let's reach out and love. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are many people outside there listening to us. We would like you to share, give back, mm -hmm. you know, share with our, our parish, our brother here mm -hmm. who comes from, from a parish that really needs help, mm -hmm. the restoration of the cathedral. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things are things that we can do. And it's all about good news. Mm -hmm. Today, as we end with Breakfast with Deacons, I want to thank you for, for, for sharing with us, for spending this time looking on. I want to thank Deacon Mike James for sharing with us all about the Aparecida mm -hmm. document, the AEC and so on. And it's all good news. And for the Cardinal who will be visiting us soon. Always remember, you're looking at, on at Breakfast with Deacons, the number one breakfast show in the morning. Every Tuesday and Thursday, tune in. It's wonderful to have you. Have a wonderful week and see you on Tuesday. Thursday, got it right. Good. Mike, <laughs> thank wonderful. you so much for thank having you for me. coming on, man. Anytime. You know, Anytime. this is great. Um, you know, I, I just want to thank you for coming on. You know, Sentinels of the Dawn mm -hmm. is what the, the this document talks about for youth, mm -hmm. that they must be Sentinels of the Dawn. Right. You mm -hmm. know, um, when you passed on this to me a mm -hmm. couple of years ago, right. you know, I have been devouring it. This is how I build some of my talks and mm -hmm. so on. It comes out of the Aparecida document. <laughs>